Hey everyone, I've got a bit of a different video here today. I've been a bit unwell lately, so I haven't been able to put together a challenge run. I hope you like this one all the same. And I'll have a challenge run out soon. So today I'm going to rank all the Reaper resistance orders in XCOM 2 into a tier list. Now for those who don't know, resistance orders are the cards you can deploy at each council drop. They can provide a wide range of abilities, some of which are really awesome, and others... Well, others not so much. And if people enjoy this video, I'll do follow-up ones on the skirmishes and Templars as well. So here are our categories. The worst abilities are going to be placed into the Blast Padding Camp, meaning that they are utter garbage, just like the ability they're named after. While the best abilities are going to go into the Mimic Beacon category, meaning that they are basically godlike in how good they are. I'm going to rank each ability based on how useful it is in making the game easier for the player. And I'm going to assume that we're playing on Commander difficulty, since that's the difficulty that I've played the most. And we're talking about a regular playthrough here, not some weird challenge run like I like to do. And I'm going to try my best to remain as objective as I can in my rankings and focus on the usefulness of the perk, not how much I personally like it. Let's get into things. So first up is Ballistics Modeling. This one is pretty horrible, I have to say. It reduces weapon research time by 15%. Now that's probably going to save you a day or two. It's not a great buff. I mean, that time will add up as you research more weapons, but it's still really bad. Maybe if you were playing on Legendary where the research times are longer, or if you were going for the exquisite timing achievement, this might be useful. But as it stands, I really find these abilities that give you a smidgen of extra time to be pretty useless. So into the blast padding category for you. Alright, Between the Eyes is up next. Now, I'm probably going to get some disagreement with this one. This ability guarantees that any XCOM shot that hits a lost unit will be a kill, regardless of how much HP that lost has left. Now, it is useful, and it can be a lot of fun, especially when you team it up with a gunslinger. But the thing is, is that the lost really aren't all that dangerous. The majority of the time they appear on maps where there's plenty of verticality so you can easily position your troops out of their reach, and they're really great at giving Advent something to focus on that isn't you. So often keeping the Lost around, staying out of their reach, is a much better play than actually finishing them off. So I'm going to rank this one as good. I know some people would think it should go higher, but I'm happy with where it is. Alright, Guardian Angels, and this is what I was referring to when I was talking about objectivity. So this resistance order is one that stops your covert ops from being ambushed, ever. Now this is my single favourite ability in the game, and if we were just ranking things on how much I like them, this would be at the top, no questions asked. But in terms of making the game easier, it doesn't really do that much. It makes the game shorter, and it makes it less boring, but it doesn't make it easier. Now, ambush missions are usually easy enough to get through if you either just take your time, go nice and slow, don't activate too many enemies at once, or if you have the right unit types, you can just run through the whole map and avoid most of the bad guys. So as much as I personally like this one, I'm going to place it in the good category. It's useful, but it's not amazing. Alright, heavy equipment next. This one increases excavation speed by 50%. It can be useful if you're trying to rush certain facilities like the Scilab, but the thing here is that scanning at the Skirmisher HQ gives you the same benefits. And the Skirmisher HQ actually affects building time as well, not just excavating, so it's actually better than this ability. Now, of course, it does have the downside that you have to remain at Skirmisher HQ, so you can't scan for other rewards. However, this order isn't that great to begin with, and it can be easily replaced by a better ability. So I'm going to lump it in the decent category. It's okay, but that's about it. 
Infiltrate. Now we're getting to the good stuff. This one stops the turn timer activating on any missions until you lose concealment. So barring any bad civilian placements that often happen on this channel, this will let you take your time moving to the objective and setting up against the first pod. Now turn timers can be really brutal, especially in the early game, and getting this ability gives you so much flexibility. So it's the first one that I'm going to put into the Mimic Beacon tier. This ability is incredibly good. Lightning Strike. This gives our squad plus three mobility for the first two turns of the mission, as long as your units are concealed. So it's kind of a worse infiltrate. It has the same basic effect of buying you time against the turn countdown, and with Lightning Strike, we get a bit more flexibility in the first couple of turns so that we can get closer to the objective and set up against the first pod, but it's definitely not as good as Infiltrate. Infiltrate, we get as many turns as we like to set up. This one is only going to give us that buff for two turns, and then it's gone. So I'm going to say this one is good. It's not anything more than that. Live Fire Training. This lets you train rookies in the GTS to sergeant level straight off the bat. Now this one is huge if you can get it in the early game as you can field soldiers above what their usual level would be. Now it's obviously less useful as time goes on as you'll have more high rank soldiers anyway, but it is still good if you lose a unit. This can make training someone up to replace them much faster. So I'm going to put this one in the good category as well. It's definitely not essential, but it is very helpful to have. Munitions Expert makes all experimental ammo projects in the Proving Ground complete instantly. So this can be really useful since you can just keep building items instantly until you get the ones that you want. It lets you combat the random nature of the Proving Ground, which is really good. That being said, there's a few abilities like this one that allow you to make stuff instantly, and Munitions Expert is probably the worst out of all of them. Now it's still good, don't get me wrong, I do like this ability, but it doesn't affect blue screen rounds. And blue screen rounds are the best ammo type in the game, so a lot of the time you're just going to be building those over anything that the Proving Ground has to offer. So for that reason, I'm going to lump this one in as good, Popular Support 1 and 2. I'm going to include these ones together since they do pretty much the same thing. One increases the amount of supplies that you get from Council Supply Drops by 10%, and version 2 of the ability increases it by 15%. And I really hate both of these. In the early game, you get so few supplies that even an extra 15% isn't going to make a massive amount of difference. And in the late game, you'll usually have so many supplies that you don't need the extra anyway. So these things really suck. Blast padding tier for them. Alright, Rapid Collection is next. This one makes supply drops be collected instantly. Now it can be nice, mostly for convenience. I really hate having to leave the place that I'm scanning on the strategic layer to go and collect the supply drop, then travel back to where I was. It can be a bit annoying, so I'm going to say this one is just okay. It's a luxury ability, but it's really not necessary. Recruiting centers. Alright, so this makes new recruits only cost 15 supplies instead of 25. Now between mission rewards, scanning rewards, covert ops, you can usually gain more soldiers than you'll ever need during a campaign anyway. Not to mention there's also the black market, where you can often buy leveled troops instead of near useless rookies like you're going to get from recruiting. So there's other ways to get soldiers that can often be better than what you're going to get from recruiting. And on top of that, the discount this ability gives you isn't even that much. I mean, it's 10 supplies. That's hardly breaking the bank. So with all of that in mind, I'm going to say this ability is pretty trash. Blast padding tier for you. Resistance Network lets you make contact with other regions instantly, and I actually really like this one. I know I've dunked on some of the other abilities because they only save time, but I think this one is a bit different. 
And the reason for that is that in War of the Chosen, it's often in your best interest to not contact new regions, because doing so will mean activating another Chosen. So being able to build a resistance comm station and get your total number of contacts up while not actually expanding out can be a decent strat. If you do this, when you do need to quickly reach a new region to stop the avatar progress or unlock a helpful continental bonus, you can achieve that really quickly by using this perk. Now of course, building radio relays still takes time, so it's not a perfect strategy, but it can come in clutch in some situations. And when deciding where to place this one, I really struggled between awesome and good. But looking at the abilities that are already in the good category, this one is definitely superior to those. So I'm placing it in the awesome tier. Resistance Rising 1 and 2. So this is another pair that I'm lumping together. These two abilities give you plus 1 and plus 2 extra contacts on the strategic layer respectively. Now Resistance Rising 2 in particular is okay, but you can always just build facilities to get extra contacts. They can also come up as scanning and covert op rewards, so there's way more useful abilities to take than either of these. So for that reason, I'm going to say that they're just decent. Scavengers. Now the wording on scavengers is interesting, and I will admit I'm not 100% certain how it works. The game tells you all resource rewards from scanned rumours are doubled. Now I believe this word resource only includes supplies, intel, alloys, and Illyrium crystals. I also don't think it affects council drops since they're not classified as rumours. And the fact that I don't fully understand how this ability works should probably tell you that I don't think it's that great. It's not an ability that I take very often. Now it's definitely useful, but if it gave double of everything, like soldiers, engineers, etc., it would probably be the best in the game. As it stands, however, I'm going to say that it's good, not anything above that. And then the final ability, Volunteer Army. So this gives a chance of a resistance operative joining you on each mission. Now the resistance operatives have the same abilities as rookies, so they're not great, but I believe their stats are a little bit better. So even though they're not that useful, having an extra soldier on a mission is always really good. It just gives you more options. My main problem with this ability is that it relies on RNG. You could have resistance fighters showing up all the time on every mission, or never at all. I think I'd like this ability a lot more if it gave you the option to guarantee that you get an extra soldier, either by paying intel or supplies or something like that. But because it is unreliable, I'm gonna say that it's good. I don't think I can go higher than that, even though I do really like this one. Alright, so that will do for all the Reaper abilities in XCOM 2. Let me know in the comments which are my rankings that you agree with and which ones that you disagree with. And if you enjoyed this one, please consider leaving a like on the video and maybe we'll do another one of these in the future. And until next time, have a great day.